Meditations by Marcus Aurelius Book 6 Chapter 6 is being continued Nature is pliable, obedient and the logos that governs it has no reason to do evil it knows no evil does not does none and causes harm to nothing it dictates all beginnings and all ends just that you do the right thing the rest doesn't matter cold or warm tired or well rested despised or honored dying or busy with other assignments because dying too is one of our assignments in life there as there as well to do what needs doing look inwards don't let the true nature or value of anything elude you before long all existing things will be transformed to rise like smoke assuming all things become one or be dispersed in fragments the logos knows where it stands and what it has to do and what it has to work with the best revenge is not to be like that to more from one unselfish to move sorry to move from one unselfish action to another with god in mind only their delight and stillness the mind is that which is roused and directed by itself it makes of itself what it chooses it makes what it chooses of its own exper- experience everything is brought about by nature not by anything beyond it or within it or apart from it mixture interaction dispersal or unity order design suppose why would i want to live in disorder and confusion why would i care about anything except the eventual dust to dust and why would i feel any anxiety dispersal is certain whatever i do or suppose reverence serenity faith in the power response if responsible when jarred unavoidably by circumstances revert at once to yourself and do not lose the rhythm more than you can help you will have a better grasp of the harmony if you keep on going back to it if you have a stepmother and a real mother you would pay your respects to your stepmother yes but it is your real mother that you did go home to the court and philosophy keep returning to it to rest in its embrace it's all that makes the court and you endurable like seeing roasted meat and other dishes in front of you and suddenly realizing this is a dead fish a dead bird a dead pig or that this noble vintage is grape juice and the purple robes are sheep wool dyed with shellfish bread sorry blood or making love something rubbing against your penis a brief seizure and a light cloudy liquid perceptions like that latching on to things and piercing through them so we see what they really are that's what we need to do all the time all through our lives when things lay claim to our trust to lay them bare and see how pointless they are to strip away the legend that interests them pride is a master of deception when you think you are occupied in the weightiest business that is when he has you in his spell things ordinary people are impressed by fall into the categories of things that are held together by simple physics like stones or wood or by natural growth figs vines olives those admired by more advanced minds are held together by a living soul like flocks of sheep herds of cow still more sophisticated people admire what is guided by a rational mind not the universal mind but one admired for its technical knowledge for some other skill or just because it happens to own a lot of slaves but those who revere that other mind the one we will share as humans and as citizens aren't interested in other things their focus is on the state of their own minds to avoid all selfishness and illogic and to work with others to achieve that goal some things are rushing into existence others out of it some of what now exists is already gone change and flux constantly remake the world 
just as the incessant progression of time remarks and eternity we find ourselves in a river which of the things around us should we value when none of them can afford a firm foothold like an attachment to a sparrow we glimpse it and it is gone and life itself like the decoction of blood the drawing in of air we expel the power of breathing we drew in at birth just yesterday or the day before breathing it out like the air we exhale at each moment what is it in ourselves that we should praise not just transpiration even plants do that or respiration even beasts and wild animals breathe or being struck by passing thoughts or jerked by a puppet by your own impulses or moving in herds or eating and relieving yourselves afterwards then what is to be praised an audience clapping no no more than the clacking of their tongues which is all that public praise amounts to a clacking of tongues so we throw out other people's recognition what is left for us to praise praise i think it's this to do or not to what we were designed for that is the goal of all trades all arts and what each of them aims at that the thing they create should do what it was designed to do the nursery man who cares for the vines the horse trainer the dog breeder that is what they aim at after teaching and education what else are they trying to accomplish so that's what we should praise hold on to that and you won't be tempted to aim at anything else and if you cannot stop praising a lot of things then you will never be free free independent imperturbable 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 because you will always be envious and jealous afraid that people might come and take it all away from you plotting against those who have themselves things you you praise people who need those things are bound to be a mess and bound to take out their frustrations on the gods whereas to respect your own mind to praise it will leave you satisfied with your own self well integrated into your community and in tune with the gods as well embracing what they allot you and what they ordain i repeat this whereas to respect your own mind to praise it to praise it will leave you satisfied with your own self well integrated into your community and in tune with the gods as well embracing that they allot you and what they ordain the elements move forward the elements move upward downward in all directions the motion of virtue is different deeper it moves at a steady pace on a road hard to discern and always forward forward the way people behave they refuse to admire their contemporaries the people whose lives they share no but to be admired by posterity people they have never met and never will that's what they set their hearts on you might as well be upset at not being a hero to your great grandfather not to assume it is impossible because you find it hard but to recognize that if it is humanly possible you can do it too in the ring our opponents can gouge us with their nails or butts or butt us with their heads and leave a bruise but we do not denounce them for it or get upset with them or regard them from then on as violent types we just keep an eye on them after that not out of hatred or suspicion just keeping a friendly distance we need to do what in that in other areas we need to excuse what our sparing partners do and just keep our distances we need to excuse what our sparring partners do and just keep our distance without suspicion or hatred if anyone can refute me show me i am making a mistake or looking at things from the wrong perspective i will gladly change it is truth i am after and the truth never harmed anyone what harms us is to persist in self deceit and ignorance i do what is mine to do and the rest doesn't disturb me the rest is inanimate or has no logos or it wanders 
or it wanders at random and has lost the round up when you deal with irrational animals with things and circumstances be generous and straight forward you are rational they are not when you deal with fellow human beings behave as one they share in the logos and invoke the gods regardless don't worry about how long you will go on doing this a single afternoon would be enough alexander the great and his mule driver both died at and the same thing happened to both they were absorbed alike into the life force of the world or dissolved alike into atoms think how much is going on inside you every second in your soul in your body why should it astonish you that so much more everything that happens in that all embracing unity the world is happening at the same time if someone asked you how to write your name would you clench your teeth and spit out the words one by one if he lost his temper would you lose yours as well or would you just spell out the individual letters remember your responsibilities can be broken down into individual parts as well concentrate on those and finish the job methodically without getting stirred up or meeting anger with anger how cruel to forbid people to want what they think is good for them and yet that is just what you won't let them do when you get angry at their misbehavior they are drawn towards what they think is good for them but it's not good for them then show them that prove it to them instead of losing your temper death the essence of sense perception of being controlled by our emotions of mental activity of enslavement to our bodies disgraceful for the soul to give up when the body is still going strong to escape imperialization that indelible stain it happens make sure you remain straight forward upright relevant serious unadorned an alley of justice pious kind affectionate and doing your duty with a vigil find to be the person philosophy tried to make you fight to be the person philosophy tried to make you revere the gods watch over human beings our lives are short the only rewards of our existence here are an unstained character and unselfish acts take antonimus as your model always his energy is doing what was rational his steadiness in any situation his sense of reverence his calm expression his gentleness his modesty his eagerness to grasp things and how he never let things go before he was sure he had explained them thoroughly understood them perfectly the way he put up with unfair criticism without returning it how he could not be hurried how he would not listen to informers how reliable he was as a judge of character and of actions not prone to backbiting a cowardice or jealousy or empty rhetoric content with the basics in living quarters bedding clothes food servants how hard he worked how much he put up with his ability to work straight through his till dusk because of his simple diet he did not even need to relieve himself except at set times his constancy and reliability as a friend his tolerance of people who openly questioned his views and his delight at seeing his ideas improved on his petty without a trace of superstition so that when you your time comes your conscience will be as clear as his awaken return to yourself now no longer asleep knowing they were all dreams clear headed again treat everything around you as a dream i am composed of a body and a soul things that happen to the body are meaningless it cannot discriminate among them nothing has meaning to my mind except its own actions which are within its own control and it is only the immediate ones that matter its past and future actions too are meaningless it is normal to feel pain in your hands and feet if you are using your feet as feet and your hands as hands and for a human being to feel stress is normal 
if he is living a normal human life and if it's normal how can it be bad thieves perverts parasites dictators the kind of pleasures they enjoy have you noticed how professionals will meet the man on the street halfway but without compromising the logos of their trade should we as humans feel less responsibility to our logos than builders or pharmacists do a logos we share with the divine asia and europe distant recesses of the universe the ocean a drop of water mount athos a mole hill the present a split second in eternity minuscule transitory insignificant everything derives from it that universal mind either as effect or consequence the lion's jaws the poisonous substances and every harmful thing from thorns to mud are byproducts of the good and beautiful so do not look at them as alien to what you revere but focus on the source that all things spring from if you have seen the present then you have seen everything as it is been since the beginning as it will be forever the same substance the same form all of it keep reminding yourself of the way things are connected or their relatedness all things are implicated in one another and in sympathy with each other this event is the consequence of some other one things push and pull on each other and breathe together and are one the things ordained for you teach yourself to be at one with those and the people who share them with you treat them with love with real love implements tools equipments if they do what they were designed for then they work even if the person who designed them is miles away but when naturally occurring things the force that designed them is present within them and remains there which is why we owe it special reverence we owe it special reverence with the recognition that if you live and act as it dictates then everything in you is intelligently ordered just as everything in the world is you take things you take things you don't control and define them as good or bad and so of course when the bad things happen or the good ones don't you blame the gods and feel hatred for the people responsible or those you decide to make responsible much of our bad behavior stems from trying to apply those criteria if we limited good and bad to our own actions we did have to call to challenge god or to treat other people as enemies all of us are working on the same project some consciously with understanding some without knowing it i think this is what heraclitus meant when he said that those who sleep are also hard at work that they too collaborate in what happens some of us work in one way and some in others and those who complain and try to obstruct and thwart things they help as much as anyone the world needs them as well so make up your mind who you will choose to work with the force that directs all things will make good use of you regardless will put you on its payroll and set you to work but make sure it is not the job chrysippus chrysippus speaks of the bad line in the play put there for laughs does the sun try to do the rain's work or asclepius demeter's and what about each of the stars different yet working in common if the gods have made decision about me and the things that happened to me then they were good decisions it is hard to picture a god who makes bad ones and why would they expend their energies on causing me harm what good would it do them or the world which is their primary concern and if they haven't made decisions about me as an individual they certainly have about the general welfare and anything that follows from that is something i have to welcome and embrace and if they make no decision about anything and it is blasphemous even to think so because if so then let us stop sacrificing praying swearing oaths and doing all the other things we do believing the whole thing that the gods are right here with us 
if they decide nothing about our lives well i can still make decisions can still consider what it is to my benefit to do and what benefits anyone is to do what it's what his own nature requires and mine is rational rational and civic my city and state are rome as antonymous but as a human being the world so for me good can only mean what is good for both communities whatever happens to you is for the good of the world that would be enough right there but if you look closely you will generally notice something else as well whatever happens to a single person is for the good of others good in the ordinary sense as the world defines it just as the era and the other spectacles vary out you have seen them all before and the repetition grates on your nerves so too with life the same things the same causes on all sides how much longer keep this constantly in mind that all sorts of people have died all professionals all nationalities follow the thought all the way down to philistian phoebus or origanian now extend it to other species we have to go there too where all of them have already gone the eloquent and the wise like socrates pythagoras the heroes of old the soldiers and kings who followed them archimedes hipparchus the smart the generous the hard working the cunning the selfish and even menippus and his cohorts who laughed at the whole brief fragile business all underground for a long time now and what harm does it do them or the others either either the ones whose names we do not even know the only thing that isn't worthless to live this life out truthfully and the only thing that isn't worthless to live this life out truthfully and right, rightly and be patient with those who do not when you need encouragement think of the qualities the people around you have this one's energy that one's modesty another's generosity and so on nothing is as encouraging as when virtues are visibly embodied in the people around us when we are practically showered with them it's good to keep this in mind it does not bother me it does not bother you that you weigh only x or y pounds and not 300 why should it bother you that you have only x or y years to live and not more you accept the limits placed on your body accept those placed on your time do your best to convince them but act on your own if justice requires if met with force then fall back on acceptance and peaceability use this setback to practice other virtues remember that our efforts are subject to circumstances you weren't aiming to do the impossible aiming to do what then to try and you succeeded what you set out to do is accomplished ambition means trying your well-being to what other people say or do self indulgence means trying it to the things that happen to you sanity means trying it to your own actions you don't have to turn this into something it does not have to upset you things you can't shape our decisions by things cannot shape our decisions by themselves practice really hearing what people say do your best to get inside their minds what injuries the hives injures the bee what injures the hive injures the bee if the crew talked back to the captain or patients to their doctors then whose authority would they accept how would the passenger be kept safe or the patient healthy all those people who came into the world with me and have already left honey tastes bitter to a man with jaundice people with rabies are terrified of water and a child's idea of beauty is a ball why does that upset you do you think falsehood is less powerful than bile or a ra- rabbit dog no one can keep you from living as your natu- nature requires nothing can happen to you that is not required by nature the people they want to 
ingratiate themselves with and the results and the things they do in the process how quickly it will all be erased by time how much has been erased already book 6 completed